Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for a special live streamed curator discussion. My name is Sue Burgess and I'm the Shrines Director of Public Programs. I'll be joined today in conversation with Dr Madonna Gran and hopefully we'll be also joined by Shrine Curator Neil Sharkey who's having a few technical issues as we speak. The Shrine is held in care by the Shrine Trustees on behalf of all Victorians. We embrace the diversity of our state and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects to their elders past and present and the elders from other communities who are joining us online today. I extend a special welcome to all past and present members of the Australian Defence Forces and thank you for your service. I would also like to acknowledge the members of the Second Third Australian Hospital Ship Centre Association and their relatives and friends who hopefully are online joining us today. Today's discussion will have a brief introduction about the Centaur exhibition and before we, uh, and then I'll formally introduce our two, two curators and then we'll move into a QA and a session. We would love to make this as interactive as possible so please uh, post your questions in the chat section of the, um, of the, of the video. Um, so let's go into an intro of the um, exhibition. The Shrine's newest exhibition, Dean Bowen's Imagining Centaur, explores the sinking of the second, third Australian hospital ship Centaur by a Japanese submarine in the Second World War. At the core of the exhibition is a selection of beautiful charcoal drawings by renowned artist Dean Bowen. Dean was inspired by 2009 news reports showing footage of the Centaur wreck over 2,000 metres below sea level. Seeing these images and thinking about the tragedy, Dean began to create a series of interpretive charcoal drawings. And in 2018, Bowen approached the Shrine of Remembrance with an offer to donate some of these drawings and other works under the Commonwealth Government's Cultural Gift Scheme. The Shrine was delighted to accept. Shrine curator Neil Sharkey was keen to bring the central story to our attention again, and many years later, the story still has power to move people. The exhibition is further enhanced by an animation of the central art created by Japanese audiovisual artist Ayumi Sasaki. It's supported by a soundscape, including a beautiful poetry recitation. Commissioned by the Shrine, the animation is available to view on our website, and hopefully you've all had a chance to look at it. Neil and Dean Bowen also collaborated to present the gallery space itself as a critical component of the exhibition. The gallery walls are painted in the unambiguous hospital ship paint scheme that Centaur bore when the torpedo struck, while immersive light projections evoke Centaur's watery grave. The charcoal drawings are not framed, but they float off the wall in a specially developed system as if suspended in space. To provide some historical context for the exhibition, it was decided to include historical relics and personal stories with the people who were caught up in the actual events of the 14th of May 1943. We would like to thank our donors, the Australian War Memorial, the Centaur Memorial Fund for Nurses, the Second Third AIH Australian Hospital Ship Centre Association, the State Library of Queensland, and the families of victims of the tragedy, including the most famous victim of the tragedy, the only surviving nurse, Sister Ellen Savage. We enlisted the support of noted medical historian and Centaur expert, Donna Madonna, Dr. Madonna Gran. Madonna served as exhibition co-curator and is also joining us in today's conversation. And I'm very happy to say Neil has joined us, which is fantastic. Um, I'd now like to introduce our speakers today. Dr. Madonna Gran is an independent historian, a registered general nurse and midwife, an honorary fellow in nursing at the University of Melbourne. She's an oral history interviewer for the National Library of Australia and advisor to the television series, Who Do You Think You Are? In 2012, with support from the Royal Australian College of Nursing, Madonna researched Centaur's complement of 12 Australian Army service nurses, only one of whom survived the sinking. In 2015, as the John Oxley Fellow at State Library of Queensland, Madonna investigated the Centaur Memorial Fund for Nurses, Queensland's tribute to nurses who served the state during the two world wars on the military and home fronts. A very warm welcome to Madonna. Thank you, Sue, and good morning, everybody. Neil Sharkey has been a curator at the Shrine of Remembrance since January 2007 and in that time has developed 30 Shrine special exhibitions as well as the permanent Second World War Gallery. He has prevented professional development seminars for Museums Australia, the National Archives of Australia and Military History and Heritage Victoria. 
He was a member of the judging panel for the 2017 and 2018 Museums Australia Victoria Awards. And a very warm welcome to Neil. Okay, and just remind you again, uh, questions can be uh, placed into the um, uh, comment section um, whilst you're watching the video. But I'll get the conversation going and I'm going to ask Madonna a question. Um, Madonna, what inspired you to research the nurses on the Centaur? And did you ever meet any of their survivors or families? Well, look, good morning, everybody who's um, tuning in to this opportune occasion, given that we're in lockdown in Melbourne and our exhibition hasn't been able to launch yet. So um, it's a lovely opportunity to talk about what we're aiming to do with the exhibition when you do come to visit. So thanks very much, Sue. Um, I started my work on the Centaur Nurses uh, when I was a board member of um, an organisation called the Nurses Memorial Centre at um, St Kilda Road. It was established after World War II as a memorial to uh, that particular group of service nurses because there, there was only one memorial to nurses in Melbourne that was used on Anzac Day and that was a, uh, it still exists, it's a, um, a bust, not exactly a bust, it's a head of um, Edith Cavill who was a, killed in World War I, an English nurse working in Belgium. And the World War II nurses felt that they didn't have their own memorial, so they set one up at St Kilda Road and they made it an, um, an educational uh, tribute to their serving, to the World War II serving nurses. And I was a board member there. We had a memorial in uh, the 65th anniversary of the sinking of the Centaur and I discovered that most of, most of the people who knew about these nurses had died and there was very little about them. Um, whereas there were a lot about the prisoner of war nurses because they uh, many of them had survived. So that's how my interest began. I also discovered that there was a Centaur scholarship in Queensland and a Centaur, or a Centaur fellowship in Queensland and a Centaur scholarship in Victoria. And I, I had to do quite a bit of work for myself to understand the difference. And that's how I came to study the particular organisation in Queensland called the Centaur Memorial Fund for Nurses, which was the equivalent of the Nurses Memorial Centre in Victoria. Wonderful. Thank you, Madonna. We'll interrogate. Well, and the second question, Sue, was yes. did, I really, did I meet anybody? Um, once I joined the memorial services, which uh, uh, were held until very recently at Heidelberg Repat Hospital, uh, where the Centaur uh, wing is and a beautiful stained glass memorial within the chapel, I met Martin Pash there when he was in his dotage. But other than that, it's really only, it's it's relatives, uh, children of people who are on the Centaur, um, direct descendants mostly. Wonderful, thank you. I'll go to Neil now and we'll, we'll um, Neil, you're obviously familiar with this story of the Centaur, but when you saw the artwork from Dean Bowen, what really inspired you about that artwork? Um. Well, because it was inspiring, I suppose. Uh, the it, I'd never quite seen anything like that as far as um, art depicting uh, an event in wartime. Um, uh, I'm very used to when dealing with uh, war art, which I, I use a lot in my exhibitions as a as a way to, you know, illustrate certain points in history or certain uh, key figures um, uh, that. You know they're done in a in a particular sort of style. You know um, the the artists that create them are, are very much conscious of the fact that they're creating, um, you know, historical documents. I suppose, uh, and even when those paintings are abstracted, uh, you know that there's always a, a a very tangible link to you know a historical time or place or event. I'd never seen any art. Uh, depicting an historical event that was so clearly drawn from the imagination and, and you know, a very unique um, uh, uh, imagination. And, and, and I thought, gee, nobody's ever viewed um, this event through this lens, you know, through a lens like this before. Uh, and, and I thought that, um, you know, I was familiar with Dean's work. I, uh, anyone who Googles 
his work will find that there's a, a great deal out there. It's all over the world. It, it's all over Australia uh, in, in public, um, uh, you know, a lot of councils, a lot of um, public institutions will have examples of his sculptures, his, his paintings and so forth. Um, it's very quirky, vibrant work. Uh, it's playful. Um, but this work was different from the other work of his that I'd seen in the past. It was, it was, it was very beautiful, of course, but it was also dark and unsettling. And I thought, uh, gee, we could do a really good exhibition on this event uh, with um, using this uh, using this unique vision as the as the way to draw people to it. And uh, so I think that's that's uh, that, that's what really inspired me to. Uh, I mean, I'd been wanting to do an exhibition on this particular event for a long time, uh, and and this I saw as the way that to do it, but in a very different way. So, Madonna, thinking about the fact that you haven't seen the exhibition yet, like the majority of our audience, <laughs> what do you what are your thoughts on the idea of of, of history and modern artistic response working together? Um, look, to be honest, Sue, it's, it was really um, quite a new, I agree with Neil, it's a completely different way to um, come into an exhibition. Um, the, Neil, anyone who looks at Dean Bowen's work a lot, it's a naive form of art, which is a recognised form of art, but what Dean's done with the charcoal um, display is to really convey um, there's an evil about the um, event because it was a war crime. Um, N N uh, Dean's paintings are really bright. They're often really um, superbly um, depicted with fabulous colour and in a way they're kind of happy pictures. But once you take the colour out of them, they're sombre and the message is sombre. And as Neil said, he's been aiming to do something on the centaur for some time. And of course, working up to any of these kinds of um, displays in a big way like this one is, takes years of work. And, and one of the things about exhibitions is that they are anchored to an anniversary, like a 65th or a 75th. And I think the beauty of this one is that it's not anchored to an, a particular anniversary. It's there because it's part of our war history, part of our social history. The crime occurred off Queensland. It had, I think, much more of an impact for Queensland in some way because it brought the, the war closer to, it was only 100 kilometres from the coast. So perhaps people realise that, that closeness just in the same way that the midget submarines in, the, in Sydney Harbour brought the war close to Sydney. The, sink, the sinking of the centaur had a big impact in Queensland and uh, it, it's opportune for people to be able to participate in those events, in, in um, commemoration of those events outside anniversary dates, I think. I think it's a great opportunity and I'm so pleased we've been able to almost get it together. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 it's nearly there and I know Neil and I are really um, just counting the days, not that we know how many days it will be, but <laughs> counting the days when we can actually get people to physically experience what is really quite um, a beautiful exhibition. Now, we, are, we have a question from the audience for Madonna, if you'd like to um, listen to this one, Madonna. Um, at the Queensland Library, uh, there's a beautiful poem about the centaur can you tell me about the author and the poem? Um, this poem is actually, um, I, if it's the one I'm thinking about, um, by Paul Sherman. Paul Sherman died a couple of years ago. He was a well-known um, Shakespearean actor, teacher and performer in Brisbane. And in 1993, he went to a seminar on the sinking of the centre. It was the 50th anniversary. It was held at the State Library and he wrote a reflective poem. It's a series of poems put together that's become an epic. And he published it in 93 and then extended it in 94 and uh, won the Warana Prize for poetry competition, actually. Um, it's a beautifully evocative piece. Um, we um, commissioned the recording, uh, a colleague of mine whose father had served in two world wars, 
Elaine Ackworth is an actor in Brisbane and Elaine um, performed the poem and extracts of the poem have been used in the uh, animation that you mentioned at the beginning. Um, it's a very, uh, once you see it together, it's, uh, it's incredibly powerful to put spoken word with music and it moving image in the animation, but the poem itself is beautiful. It takes about 25 minutes to recite and we're really, really pleased that this is an opportunity to um, showcase work that expresses commemoration, that's not the conventional kind of work. So we're used to artworks, we're used to mm -hmm. maps and drawings and newspaper articles, but poetry is quite different and this one is very powerful. It is available at the um, State Library of Queensland and we, I really hope you people have the opportunity to listen to the whole poem. In due course, there'll be a recording of the full poem by Elaine in the State Library of Queensland catalogue. Fantastic. So that probably is a nice segue into speak to Neil then about his decision to animate the artworks and to use the poetry. So Neil, do you want to um, tell us a bit more about that thought process you went through? Uh, yeah. Um, well, in when I first began chatting with Dean about how we might present his work, um, I can't remember exactly how it came up, but... Uh, <laughs> It it it, um, it did come up that a um, that Dean exhibits a lot of his work in a gallery in Japan, and there's a, a chap there who owns the gallery uh, called Yutaka, and Yutaka year, many years ago commissioned um, a a friend of his, uh, Ayumi Sasaki, uh, uh, to animate a series of um, artworks, works of art that Dean uh, was uh, exhibiting in Utaka's gallery. And, and just when he said that, I thought, now there's an interesting idea. And I had one of the things that um, I'd come across while I was doing research um, for this exhibition, uh, and which in fact reminded me of Madonna and her interest in the centaurs when I first started um you know, Googling to get uh, inspiration for how we might present things, is it threw up an animation, uh, a much more uh, sort of historic, um, a much more historic sort of animation that had been produced uh, where Madonna had been the, um, the historical advisor. And, and that animation was one of these, I don't know if everyone's familiar with the animated whiteboard style of animation, where you get a blank white screen and then, uh, you know, you see somebody's hand drawing um, various elements that are then, you know, go, f you know, that sort of pop from one idea to another. Uh, it's a very common form of, uh, of animation. It was very effective uh, and I encourage you all to look that, that, that animation up. But just the idea that an animation could be used to convey the story um, of what happened uh, very quickly and very e efficiently and effectively uh, got me thinking um, that perhaps we could do something similar with Dean's drawings. So um, you'll see anyone who looks at the two side by side will, will notice just how different they are, um, but it, that was the inspiration. So having seen that that older animation, the, the whiteboard style one that Madonna had advised on, you know, then I then went and rang up Madonna and spoke to her and that's how Madonna came became involved in the um, in the project. I, of course, already knew Madonna, though we um, years ago she'd um, been involved in another exhibition at the Shrine. Um, so that was just a happy synergy. I mean, so much of what goes on uh, mm -hmm. in lots of projects are, are just a wonderful synergy of, um, uh, particularly if you've been in the business for a, for a few years, you know, you get to know people and and uh, and one connection comes together and joins another one. So once I knew that, you know, I was exposed to the idea that, you know, that an animation could be very effective in getting the story across, that I knew that I had, I mean, we already had a set of, of drawings of the event uh, and, I, and I knew that there was somebody who had the skills to animate the, animate the drawings that we did have, 
then it, it really began to fall um, uh, in place. In, deal, in speaking with Madonna, then I learned of the uh, sound engineer Guy Webster, um, and the and the poem and the the actress um, uh, that that she mentioned um, that were able um, to, and then all of a sudden all of the elements were in place. So we had the drawings, we had the animator, we had the the, the poem, we had the uh, the the actress with the skills to bring it to life. And all of these disparate elements that once upon a time really had nothing to do with each other, all of a sudden were, came together in this beautiful way. And, and um, so I'd really like to thank, uh, you know, Yutaka, Yumi, Paul, Guy, Webster, who's the sound engineer, um, and um, the actress, uh, Miss Ackworth. Elaine, yeah. Elaine, yeah. Elaine Ackworth. Yeah. Beautiful and um, yeah, no, no, it's just uh... well, yeah. I, I think Neil, it would probably, I think it'd be uh, appropriate to say that the whole thing exceeded our expectations in terms of the end product of the animation. It's just amazing. Um, we have another question from the audience, and I'd like both of you to address it. So we'll start with Madonna. Mm -hmm. um, this is a question about the poster that says it's in the exhibition that says "Avenge the Nurses," which was a contemporary piece. Um, this uh, person's wondering if you could talk about the public reaction to the sinking. So I'll get both of you to address that in turn. So, Madonna, I'll get you to start. Yes, look, I, I became interested. Just before I address that question, if I may slightly deviate, I just want to give credit to the, the whiteboard animation that Neil's talking about was an idea of a teacher of nurses at um, Noosa. Her name's... Um, Margaret McAllister and we're always looking for ways to convey the history of our profession to students and that was something she came up with with a graphic artist and and uh, she asked me to just be sure that we were displaying the right uniforms etc etc so that was how the lead into using cartoons but this graphic art we have the original poster or one of the original pair of posters um, devised in 1943 by the advertising directorate of the War Cabinet. Um, and the first one says, uh, um, work, stay, fight, and so avenge the nurses. And the other one, which we don't have, says, save for the brave. Um, these two posters came out of a response, a government response to the sinking of the Centaur. Of course, we know that um, 268 people were killed. And why the government decided to focus on the nurses was really a kind of advertising coup, if you like. Um, all of the people on board the Centaur were non-combatants. And but in like any good advertising campaign, you need a hook to focus people's attention on, on the subject you're wanting to sell. And so they decided to focus um, unapologetically on female non-combatants who were killed. So the two posters were made by a, 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 Mel, a Sydney um, advertising bureau, the same one that does those fantastic iconic posters of surf lifesavers near the Sydney Harbour Bridge. <laughs> and uh, I think people will agree that the colour and the matching was incredible. They, they interviewed, um, the Naval Intelligence Unit interviewed Ellen Savage in hospital at Greenslopes Repat. Um, it wasn't a repat then, it was the General Hospital. Um, and they took her, because her recollection of the three minutes of the sinking was so clear, they took her version and that was put into these posters. Fantastic. And, Neil, do you want to add um, your in your research? Yeah. What you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, I think um, everything that Madonna has uh, mentioned is, is spot on. Uh, I think um, one thing I will add um, is that uh, I think the reason why the nurses provided this hook. The, re the reason why it was the nurses that that were such a powerful symbol of the the outrage of the of the the war crime, is that uh, in both world wars Australia was actually very uh, fortunate in a way, in that uh, civilian you know the, the civilian population of Australia were largely untouched by um, what happened in the war. And comparatively, very few women and Australian women and children became victims of of the war. Uh, certainly, um, the percentage of Australian uh, soldiers sent overseas that 
were, were killed or maimed was very high, but um, but by the standards of the rest of the world, by the standards of countries like you know Poland or France or China or um, Malaya or places like that, the numbers of uh, women and children that came Australian women and children that came to harm as as a direct result of the war was very low, and so um, I, I think. Um, when when women act, when women uh, even women in the services like the nurses uh, on Centaur or the ones that uh, on Banker Island and some of these other um, in, in Rabaul that, that fell into Japanese captivity or that were um, killed as a result of uh, enemy action uh, uh, were really just beyond beyond the pale as far as the Australian um, uh, community was concerned because they just didn't have that point of reference that. You know, someone in Poland say would have would have thought, yeah, of course, women and children get killed. That's that's um, so. It was just so shocking for for the uh, the mindset of the time because Australia was just so um, physically isolated from, um, mm. from um, itself. And, and Neil, if I might add, the um, Lorraine Blow uh, um, was injured, and um, Sister Lamestra was killed in the Darwin bombing. But mm. until then, there were no nurses killed. In 1943, the loss of the Centaur nurses was the greatest of any group of women because known, because yeah, the, nurses who, the nurses who were POWs were not discovered until October, really August 45, later than August 45. Yeah, and, mm. and so, and the others who were killed in car accidents, we, we uh, don't really um, commemorate them even though they were killed on active service. So, um, in fact, the, once after the war, the emphasis was on the plight of the POWs because that was profound and it was a greater number. Mm. And the, many, many of them came from the Viner Brook and were killed in the, ori the original sinking of the Viner Brook. So, and then, of course, there were the rebel nurses who were put into Yokohama as POWs mm. and developed TB and all kinds of things. That yeah, we yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point. Yeah, they just yeah, didn't. But, but it's the fact that, that there were, it was the first loss collectively of nurses to a, such an extent in Australian waters that was mm. so profound, I think. So and every you... family had a nurse. Every family had a nurse. And those posters went to every workplace, union, shop, business, all around Australia. And mm. that is why when sometimes I'm critiqued when I do my presentations about the emphasis on the nurses and uh, why we talk about them and not the 251 other people who were killed. But, you know, the, the second 12th field ambulance um, lost 193 members. Um, I think that's correct. Neil will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, you know, that, that, that organisation, that part of the medical corps doesn't exist anymore, whereas the nursing profession, supported by all of the fundraising efforts around Australia, continued. And, and we see it as our responsibility to carry the flame for everybody who mm. was lost during these kinds of events. So continuing on with uh, the story of the nurses, there's a question about um, Sister Savage. Um, what do we know about how she coped emotionally after this event? And then for Neil to talk about um, how she is featured in the exhibition. So I'll start with Madonna to talk about um, Sister Savage post the event? Um, most, may, many people tuning into this discussion will know that Ellen was the only one of uh, the 12 nurses to survive. And she had served on the Aronia, which was um, carried seven of her colleagues. She was part of a team. So this poor individual woman who was the only woman to survive, um, in my view, carried that kind of survivor weight all of her life. She was expected at all of the Anzac events. People, I know from the Centaur Memorial Fund, they invited her every year. They, She was the first guest at the Centaur House when it opened as the memorial tribute to World War One and World War Two nurses. And um, I, I think she, she was known to have a very vibrant personality, but she was also a very private individual. Uh, her colleagues at Newcastle Hospital tell me that anyway. She loved to party, but she was a private person at the same time. And, um, yeah, I think there was a big responsibility for her to be representative of that kind of grief. I can't imagine it. 
how what a heavy burden that must have been. But when she recovered from her broken palate and her broken ribs and fractured thumb and burnt burns, she received was awarded the first um, um, central scholarship in Victoria. She went to England to study nursing administration, which took her away from the immediacy of um, the event. And she studied, she got a certificate in administration and came back to Australia and worked in Newcastle. Uh, thanks, Madonna. So, Neil, tell us about um, how Sister Savage appears in the exhibition. Yeah, well, we've got, um, I was able to make contact with her uh, grandnephew, uh, Gavin Keating, and so he has very kindly um, allowed us to um, loan her George Medal, which is uh, the the award that she was given uh, for her, her, her courage uh, during the events um, of the, the sinking. And we've also got the shoulder boards, so like her ranked shoulder boards, so um, the, the pips that would, you know, indicate her rank that would have been worn on the epaulets of her tunic and, uh, and, and some of the and the rest of the metal group. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, we're very, I mean, it's, it's tremendous to have those things on, uh, on display and look, and, and, and getting back to, I guess, uh, the focus on the nurses, uh, I'd just like to assure everyone that's, that's watching here today that it's by no means, the, the exhibition is by no means, uh, a, a nurse only show. Uh, we've got material uh, belonging to Private um, George McGrath, who was a member of the 2nd 12th uh, Field Ambulance, which was the largest um, single, um, uh, which, which was which was the, the most represented um, unit of uh, men aboard Central when she was sunk. Uh, they were actually um, uh, passengers being transported to New Guinea. Uh, they were just hitching a ride with Centaur, actually, in the empty in the empty bunks that would have transported uh, wounded people from New Guinea back to Australia. Um, we've got uh, um, the tunic of uh, Captain uh, Bernard Hindmarsh, uh, courtesy of his daughter Jan Thomas, uh, um, and, and that's the tunic he wore on the previous hospital ship that he worked on, which was Aronye, which Madonna mentioned before that uh, um, that Ellen uh, Savage was also a member of. Uh, and uh, we've even got some um, the light uh, vest bo uh, lights. Um, you know, the survivors that were in the water had these little lights attached to their life um, preservers, and and a couple of those were uh, salvaged by Gunner's mate Talmadge Johnson, who was uh, one of the crew of the USS Mugford, uh, the American destroyer that rescued um, the survivors. So. You know, we've done our very best um, to represent, to give a good cross cross section of of all of the people that were on board um, Centaur, and certainly the drawings uh, also reflect that. Um, Dean's uh, charcoal drawings also reflect uh, some of the other um, survivors and victims uh, of the sinking too. So, um, yeah. Neil, yeah, I wonder if we could just say something about there's two items that I think are really well, one's significant for New South Wales and then the other is of the Centaur Association. When the Centaur was found in 2009, the the uh, robot placed a plaque, a memorial plaque, um, right. and data of people who, all of the service personnel who were killed. And, uh, and uh, the Centaur Association has loaned us the replica of that plaque for the exhibition. Yep. And the yep. other thing that we have secured the loan of from the Central Memorial Fund is a beautiful um, marquette. A marquette is a model, a mock-up of, uh, for those of you who've been to the Concord Hospital, which was the Repat Hospital in Sydney, or one of them in New South Wales, there was an, there's an enormous um, memorial window um, made of stained glass. And, and we've secured the loan of the marquette and it's a stunning, stunning piece of mm. art, even though it's just the mock-up. Mm. And um, I can't wait to see it because I've only seen it in Queensland. And I understand, Neil, you've had a, a special light box made to show it off. 
Yeah, well, it's in yeah, it's <laughs> in, in a perfect world. It, it would have already been uh, made and installed, uh, but uh, uh, with uh, the 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 terrible restrictions that we oh, I shouldn't say terrible, but the restrictions that we have down here, um, it, there's uh, that uh, the work on that light box uh, keeps uh, being disrupted. But yes, yeah, certainly when the exhibition is open to the public, the stained glass window will sit atop of a light box wall display so that the window will be backlit as if it's a window mm. in a wall. And I think the, the effect will be uh, truly amazing. And, and the, the great thing about that window, uh, getting back to the, the issue of representation of all of the, the victims on Centaur, um, the, the, the window is symbolically loaded. It, it contains the national flowers of all of the states of Australia. It has the, the insignia of the AIF and of the Merchant Marine, because of course the sailors that's, um, that uh, uh, that that um, sailed Centaur were merchant seamen, um, as well as the, the the unit markings of the um, the Second Twelfth Field Ambulance, uh, the the red ensign for the Army, us uh, for the Merchant Navy, and the uh, uh, yeah. So look, all of these all of these um, symbols you know, built into the design of the window. Yes. It give. really it really is a stunning, stunning piece. It's by Martin van, uh, Martin van der Torn, yes, mm. and uh, it's about 24 by 42, I think. The original is really quite tall. It's about um, it's a couple of metres. So, yeah. um, this, but but we're, it's a great, we've been lucky to secure the loan of this because it's such a special item and it's uh rarely seen in public, like the medals of Ellen Savage. And actually Ellen's relatives, some of whom are in northern New South Wales, some of whom are in Canberra, they're all excited to be able to see these things because even within families there's not often an opportunity to see these special remembrances. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, um, Ellen's George Medal uh, usually lives in a, in, you know, in one of those um, framed, you know... Carefully placed storage yeah, containers. Uh, on a wall. <laughs> In a wall in the Keating House, so yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so wonderful that they that they've been willing to to share such a precious thing with. And look, there's with some them. material from the Centaur Memorial Fund in Queensland because, of course, the 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 the, the commemorations that came out of these um, event of these war um, incidents, um, including the POW nurses, uh, there were a couple of campaigns in in West Australia, South Australia. Um, Victoria and Queensland, less less so in New South Wales, but to to establish centres where the profession could be memorialised by supporting education, really advancing education. And the Central Memorial Fund for Queensland has a great collection, which is now in the State Library of Queensland. And we've secured a couple of items for um, the course of the exhibition, a couple of lovely posters and some um, memorabilia and ephemera that um, talk about how communities did their own fundraising to support a local nurse in a queen of the nurses competition when you used to have those <laughs> as your main fundraising yeah uh, we, uh, thank you neil and madonna that's a fantastic you you actually covered off a couple of questions that had already come through from the audience it's great there is another question though in relation to a specific nurse so i might direct that to madonna yes. um Information about um, Nurse O'Donnell who went down on the Centaur. I'm not not expecting that you might know, but you probably do know about her. Um, and this this person would like to know where they could find out more information about Nurse O'Donnell. Oh, I've, they can contact me. I did a uh, with the help of a grant from the College of Nursing in 2012. I did biographies of the nurses. I haven't published them yet. Um, Ali Ali was. Um, a fairly recent addition to the Australian Army Nursing Service. She was a very experienced theatre nurse. When when you think about what are these people doing when they go to New Guinea and the, this, the, um, the trip's not going to be very long, you want to get up there in a couple of days, um, retrieve injured soldiers and bring them back. But that means during the night um, they have x-rays, they have um, operations, they have... Um, uh, there was a pharmacist on board dispensing medication for them. So the skill of the nurses on board was really in com dealing with complexities, particularly operating theatre cases. Several of the nurses were, were theatre nurses. Ali came from Myrtleford in northeastern Victoria, 
one of a big family. She had brothers in the services as well. And she was a private theatre nurse to a fellow, to um, Mr. Alan Newton, who'd done a lot of thyroid work. And she, um, he used to drive off to, <laughs> just to give you an idea of what private nurses used to do, she did her cases during the day, but then the evening had to um, entertain Mr. Newton's wife when they were down, <laughs> staying at Terang and Camperdown. Ali had family down at Terang. So, you know, these the, the effect of these crimes, of these incidents in World War II, they were so widespread, felt in such big um, geographic ways. Al, um, Anne Jewell, who was the matron, she came from Perth. Her father was a competitive cyclist. So he was so well known in Perth and she had a big building named after her. She was also the first aid nurse at the um, Sunshine Harvester factory in Melbourne. And, you know, there were hundreds of men who knew her from there. She was the first industrial nurse to be employed there. So um, everybody knew these people. Yeah. And, uh, their grief was, the grief was widespread. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, if I could just make one point. I mean, that's one thing that I think is, is um, uh, that I'd like to thank Dean Bowen for is just the generosity of spirit that he had to actually allow us to... Um, you know, to tease out all of these different uh, stories. Um, I certainly, I mean, just recently, you know, in discussions with one of the journalists that's written, you know, an article about, um, who wrote an article about the exhibition, she was, and one of the criticisms that she, she made a criticism to me that she sort of thought, I love all the artwork. Uh, I don't think that the exhibition needs, you know, the display case items and so on and so forth. And, and, um, and I, sort of said to her, like, had you actually, you yourself personally ever heard of of, of this event? She hadn't. And I said, well, that, that's that's kind of why we, we did it. Um, the in, in discussions with Dean, I mean, you know, it's very clear from when you see the drawings that they are works of his imagination, but they are, but they are grounded in an event and, and in uh, terrible things that happen to real people. And you know, the nature of his art is is to um, you know bring out his thoughts and feelings on learning about you know these events. And so we he he and I both agreed, and and and, and later when Madonna you know came on board, that the exhibition would would combine his imagination and his imaginings with. The real events, um, so that the uh, this beautiful artwork is 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 grounded in, uh, in in a reality, and and I and I think and so for my mind certainly, and I know that Dean agrees with me and Madonna also, that uh, we're very comfortable with the way that the exhibition has been presented, with these imaginative elements. So not only um, the drawings and the animations. But also the sound and light show, the soundscape, all, you know, all of these very artistic um, responses uh, to historical events that are there in the display cases for people to see, you know, sort of the 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 the, the ephemera, the relics of this terrible event, and 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 these wonderful people whose lives were cut short, or if they did survive, were affected ever after by what had happened. Mm. Uh, we have another question. We've, th thank you so much for submitting your question. It's been fantastic. Um, this question is in relation to USS Mugford, who found the survivors. Neil, question for you really to start. Um, can you tell us how that's represented in the exhibition? And the second part is, um, is the US Navy aware of how prominent they were in this story? Um, well, the the main was well, certainly there's a the uh, one of the display cases features the the items that were um, salvaged from by uh, Gunner's mate uh, Talmage um, uh, that you know I spoke of before. There's also a photograph of Mugford, a small photograph of Mug Mugford in the case next to it, just so that people can get a sense of 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 what. Um, uh, I guess just to help people imagine what it must have looked like when this uh, this um, vessel was 
uh, in a patch of Queensland sea surrounded by, you know, bodies floating or, or, or people um, sitting on bits of driftwood, which is the, the terrible sight that um, these guys um, saw when they happened upon the survivors. Um, look, they were very... Um, those American sailors uh, really were tremendous uh, by all accounts. Um, uh, one of the uh, terrifying aspects of the um, survivors' experiences, they were constantly being um, circled by sharks. Mm -hmm. and one of the survivors, one of the uh, centaur survivors, describes actually as the as the the survivors were being dragged onto the ship that there were sailors, American sailors on board Mugford, shooting guns into the water to to keep the sharks away. Um, and I don't know if that, that was something they needed to do or just something <laughs> that, uh, you know, uh, actually, I mean, this is probably the American response. Or... Mm. I probably haven't mentioned this to you, but um, because there's so, only so many things you can put in an exhibition, you yeah. can't fill up things with stuff because I think that it's important. But actually, there's a beautiful letter from one of the Mugford sailors in the um, Central Memorial Fund collection. Mm. Um, recounting, I think it's about, mm, might even be 1978 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I can't remember. But he recounts um, his feelings about, like, look, just like any big event in any mm. person's life, they carry it with them and it never leaves them, even if they don't speak about it. Mm. But he wrote this letter asking about if he could meet Ellen Savage again. Right. And, yeah. And um, because... Fantastic. She was a woman who stood out amongst all of these other injured men and even when she got on board ship with her injuries and when she got back to the Pinkenbar Wharf in, in the Brisbane River where they um, disembarked, she was still being a nurse, help with, trying to help people, be, you know, even though all of the Mugford sailors had taken on that role. Um, and uh, it's a very moving letter actually. But sure. I probably haven't mentioned it to you before because there's only so. No, 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 it probably would have made it in the exhibition if you had your hand. <laughs> but um, no, that's that's tremendous. Look, I mean, yeah, I mean, Ellen Savage is, you know, her gender aside, mm. was really a really standout character. I mean, you know, all of the accounts of that of that event sort of really mark her out as being the hero of the hour for for a number of reasons, just mm. for the support that she was able to give as a, you know, as a trained medical professional, uh, you know, she sang, uh, you know, she led the men in song to keep their spirits up, um, uh, you know, time and time again, you know, the survivors sort of mentioned what a, a tremendous job she did. And as for the survivors, getting back to the, the Talmadge men, I mean, they, when the survivors were on board, you know, the sailors donated clothes, they yes. took a collection around to make money. I mean, I, I think... Um, you know, we so often hear stories about, you know, oversexed, overpaid over here. Yeah. Um, of, you know, the, you know, that's kind of the, the story of the American servicemen in Australia that's come down to us. But it was so much more to that. I mean, they really were steadfast allies in so many ways and, and you know, very generous spirited people. I mean, I think Americans generally are like that. And, um, and uh, yeah, as for the second part of the question, the original question that was asked as to whether how well known this story is in America, I'm sorry, I don't know, but uh, I suspect probably not very well um, at all, sadly. Um, but it would be, uh, you know, I'd certainly love for American service people, uh, sorry, Americans visiting the shrine to travel through the exhibition and for it just to be one more thing they find out about and are proud of, you know, that their country has helped, you know, an ally. And, and, and in that event they certainly did. So because there were three three ships and as many airplanes flew, um, sailed past or flew overhead um, the, the, um, uh, the survivors in the water without spotting them. Mm. Um, so it was, an, it was an Australian spotter plane that, that eventually did see them and directed the... Um, the, uh, the the mug for two the survivors and and a destroyer is very um, it, it, for anyone who doesn't know about um, uh, sailing vessels uh, destroyers are very fast type of warship so they're able to get there very quickly. Okay, so we're nearly we're, we're getting towards the end of our time. We've had some wonderful questions from the audience. I've got one more question that I'll address to both of you in turn, and we'll start with Madonna. 
What are your thoughts on the reconciliation of past events in an exhibition like this? Uh, I, I think one of the other things that I, if I, when I do my presentations about the centre, or some people um, like you concentrate too much on the nurses, and that's because I'm a nurse, um, some people say you glorifying war. And uh, as the daughter of a returned serviceman who was in New Guinea in World War II, um, Glorifying war is uh, never further from my mind, but I think it is important to remember the sacrifices that people have made so that we were able to live freely. And um, whatever their motivations were, um, people's responses in World War II were, um, have, have contributed to an end to the war one way or another. And, uh, but, but you know, nobody expects to go, nobody expects to die when they go to work, unless they're a soldier maybe, they might think about it. So for the rest of them, I think it's incredibly important to recognise the sacrifice that they've made. And uh, um, I must admit having, I had misgivings about having an animation done in Japan. Um, even though I've studied Japanese myself and I work with Japanese colleagues, one of my colleagues works on the nurses who were at Hiroshima. So historians are among us are interested in understanding how we can use history to as a pathway for reconciliation. But um, the person who worked, Ayumi, who worked on this animation, um, I don't think she'll mind if she tells, if I explain this story. Her mother was unwell at the time she was working um, and her mother actually died while she was doing the work. And she felt quite inspired by the story of the centaur of nurses and doctors going about their work um, because around her mother's bedside were doctors and nurses looking after her mother. And so for her, it was a, a an inspirational story, not something to be afraid of or worried about. And, and I felt incredibly comforted by that. And we actually struck up a great friendship since. So I think all these, all these, um, not all exhibitions, but particularly ones like this where we offer a different way in to think about what happens in war, they offer an opportunity to have a conversation, if nothing else. And if that leads to some sort of reconciliation, that's a marvellous opportunity. Uh, thanks, Madonna. Uh, Neil, what's your reflection on that question? Yeah, well, look, I mean, um, as I explained before, um, the the inception of the the involvement of uh, Ayumi in the animation of the exhibition uh, was a, a happy coincidence in a way. It just so happened that um, in the world, the person who had animated um, Dean's work in the past happened to be Japanese. Um, but moving forward, it, once that sensibility, and, and I think anyone who's viewed the um, the animation will will probably agree that there's a sensibility to the way that it is animated that is uh, uniquely uh, a, a Japanese approach. There's I, an insight, I, an insight in there that's really yeah hard to pinpoint. It is yeah, so yeah. profoundly beautiful. Yeah, it's very it's 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 very. I mean, if you can sort of imagine a, a Japanese garden or you know the cherry blossom. Cherry Blossom Festival or something like that. It, it, it some of that magic is sort of yeah imparted into into the the um, Dean's animation, uh, Dean's work, which is itself very beautiful. Um, as for, as far as the the reconciliation, look, um, you know, you'll often hear hear it bandied about by a lot of people. Oh, that's seventy five years ago. It's time, you know, forgive and forget sort of thing. Well, <laughs> it's very easy to forgive and forget if an event hasn't affected you or your family directly. And it's very easy to remain hate-filled and hold a grudge uh, if your family or yourself have been affected by an event. Um, the hardest thing in the world is to forgive and forget when you and your family have been affected by a terrible event. Um, so, but one thing that, I, you know, having worked uh, at the shrine for a very long time, having met very many war veterans um, from the Second World War, certainly, and and other conf conflicts, um, I've met uh, 
um, men and women who have fallen into both camps, you know, that were able to um, in some way come to, um, if, if not forget, then to forgive uh, and and move forward and, and, and others who just, and you know, weren't able to. And I'm talking former prisoners of war, um, you know, people who witnessed massacres and, and so forth. Um, but, you know, I've also met um, Australian, you know, former Australian soldiers who they themselves had witnessed, um, you know, uh, what we would describe as, as war crimes against, um, you know, the the enemies that we were fighting against, Japanese, Germans, Italians and so on and so forth. Um, and, and, and certainly while, you know, you can't point to an Australian version of the Thai Burma Railway or anything like that, um, thank goodness, um, I, I think that, um, you know, we, we, we could look at the firebombing of Tokyo, we could talk about Hiroshima, we could talk about Nagasaki. Uh, you know, war in a sense is the crime. <laughs> And, and that's why avoiding them is such an important thing to do. Um, but so as far as reconciliation, I think anything that allows us to, as Madonna says, talk about a terrible event, um, bring together the two sides in that discussion, allow them to to find out about something that they didn't know about. Ayumi had never heard of Centaur before. Um, you know, she didn't know that, you know, some of her countrymen had... You know, she's a young woman. She's, you know, in her in her thirties. You know, she did she didn't know that some of her countrymen were responsible for this terrible, terrible crime and was horrified, of course. So, um, and and her way of, you know, processing that is to is to help create something that's going to spread an understanding of a terrible event so that it doesn't happen again. Mm. I think, I mean, wonderful, good things, and the fact that the that the work contains elements that are intrinsically. Australian, you know, you know, Dean's work, which is a, a very, I think, Australian sensibility uh, with, with a Japanese one. You know, I, I just think, you know, people will agree or disagree with me, but, um, but, but I think it's a wonderful thing. And, and, I, and, and I hope that only good can come of it, I think. Well, thank you both for the, the, those reflections. And I'll just uh, make acknowledgement of Richard Jones from the Centaur Association. Um, he sent a note through to say thank you so much for the conversation and to let us know that his uncle and godfather were aboard, on board the Centaur and that many of the members of the association still feel that pain today. So as we've discussed today, the, the, the pain lingers on, not just... Uh, with the immediate survivors and families, but for generations. So that's a whole other conversation that we could have. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, go we're going to wrap it up here. And I want to thank Madonna and Neil very much for their insights today. It's been really wonderful. Uh, I'd like to thank the audience for joining in our conversation today. It's been fantastic. The questions were really terrific. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Victorian government for the support that they gave us in developing the exhibition. Uh, the video of the talk will be available on the Shrine's Facebook and YouTube channels shortly. Um, if you'd like uh, to keep in touch with the Shrine, you can do that by liking us on Facebook or subscribing to our e-newsletter on the Shrine uh, website, shrine.org.au. And we'd really like to see you all uh, come and visit the exhibition when it is safe to do so. So please keep an eye out on our website and Facebook. And uh, I know Neil will be very keen to talk to people as they come in to the exhibition. So watch out for things coming up over the summer. Um, thank you so much for joining us and have a good day and stay safe, everyone. Bye for now. Tremendous. Thank you. Thank you.